Hey there everyone, I thought I'd jump in and do a very very quick and simple flower. Um, we're all struggling with a bit of mojo so I think just getting the paint moving on our paper is important so if we get to do that then we get to sort of express ourselves a little bit and take an opportunity to actually paint without thinking too much. So I've got the Mundio paints and I've got some rough rough paper here just a scrap piece of paper nothing special so I'm not going to freak out because it's a very expensive piece of paper now I often like to if I'm playing around cut my paper and I do use a little guillotine which is like so just a really cheap two dollar little guillotine that I can cut up my paper and have nice edges if I want to have smaller paper from my bigger sheets so ideally um, what I'm going to do is I've got the Mungios and I've set out some colours here. Um, just an orange, a couple of purples within the set and a yellow. Uh, not really happy with the, the purple choices within the set um, for this particular painting, but, you know, just to play around, so it doesn't matter too much. Now, the brush that I'm going to be using is the size 6 um, silver black velvet brush and... It's going to be a very, very simple, quick painting, so nothing too technical. Um, to give guideline for those who need it, just draw um, a circle on your page. That's how simple it is. And this is going to give you guidance of where your flower is going to sit on your paper. If you start randomly painting, you might have it in the wrong spot. If you pencil it in, um, it's going to give you a bit of guideline, but it's still going to be a very free floating flower so I'm going to use this big circle here which I'm just going to draw out with pencil mechanical pencil is my favorite pencil um, because the tip is so thin and it allows for a lot of drawing um, that's really precise but it also is easy to erase so all I'm doing is just giving myself a bit of a guideline circle nothing too flash and that's going to give me an idea of where to start and stop with this flower. Okay, and then I want a center point, which is pretty much you're sort of guessing it and just drawing that in. And that is going to give you a basic guide to where your flower is going to be. Um, we'll have a stem coming down. We'll have another stem coming up and through the petals. And we're going to have a new bud forming around here somewhere. Super, super simple. Um, coffee in hand drinking current coffee in hand okay to start off with clean water paper towel just the usual nothing special and I want to work in the middle of the flower itself so to do that I really want to put a lot of color in I just want to throw it in and let it do its own thing because this will have a few layers even though it's simple I'm still running with a few layers so in with the orange it's quite a bright orange and all I'm going to do is just drop it in on dry paper in that circle that we've drawn in again perfection is not important it's a very very loose painting just to get you guys going then a little bit of yellow straight out of this um, little palette and straight in with the orange and as I'm putting in the orange and the yellow the paper is becoming wet so that's giving me the opportunity now to sort of mingle and merge these two colors together. When you're happy with the amount of color you've got in that center piece, you're going to start pulling out the bits of the petals in the flower. So to start off with, I'll have a little bit of yellow on my brush and then I'm going to use um, the guide lines that I've got here. Use the tip of my brush and just come out with a V almost ending in, in your um, actual center of the flower and then I'm going to clean my brush a little bit and use that to drag the color out only a little bit that's all I want to do so pretty simple I'm going to do the same thing all the way around and I want this color to sort of flow out but I do want a little bit more yellow in it. So that's why I'm starting off with the yellow. If there's too much orange in the area, use your paper towel, dab it away. <clears throat> it's 
So again, with the yellow on my brush, but I do want to have that orange sort of seeping through and I'm going to work my way around. And this is going to represent each of the petals. Don't be afraid to turn your paper around as you paint. So just a little bit of the yellow again on my brush and then bring out the orange and let it flow. And as your painting dries, you will find that the colors do flow and tend to kick out where you didn't expect them to go when the painting's dry. So that's your centerpiece, super simple. Now, what I'm going to do next is take out a little bit of purple. This is a violety purple. And all I want to do now is bring that purple to one of the petals and drop that in and create a petal up and around with my brush. And then I want to push and draw that colour and intermingle it in with that yellow a little bit. And I want to do the same all the way around. So start in the corner, use your brush on its side, flip it around a little bit. Now you'll find if there's not enough water on your brush, it'll drag. And then I'm just connecting the other end. That's how simple it is. Now I'm coming in nice and light. There is a reason for this because if you come in too heavy straight away, um, you won't have that ability to deepen the painting as you go. And again, just a little bit of water if you need it, a little bit more of the colour. Again, start at the end and you're just looping that around, connecting it back up and then giving your brush a shake. There's no perfect way to use your brush. You use it the way that's comfortable for you. And here there's a bit of a gap and I'm not too happy with that so I want to really come in straight away. And just introduce some more colour and get that more rounded. So you want to do that again. So in with the yellow, the yellow is still wet. And just make him come around, curve it and colour. So you're working from one end, like so, using the pressure of the belly of your brush bringing it around and just connecting it to the other side of the yellow there. Nothing too hard. I'm keeping my water um, fairly dilute with the um, watercolour itself. And as I work around, so I'm working on the dry paper, just using the brush and the shape that the brush creates. Joining it up to the other end of that yellow, like so. So what you're doing here is I'm just adding a little bit more water just to get this shape that I want. Okay. And again, you're going to do the same thing here. What you want to do is within this painting, you want to create a really soft flowing effect and you want to work on your, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Your proportions. Okay, so you don't want things out of whack. And as you can see, I'm not using any pencils to draw these petals. So once you've got that done, you can let that dry. Hair dryer is my favorite sort of um, point of call. And once that is dry, which I'm going to actually shoot a little bit of hot air onto it. So excuse the noise. This will move and create some shape as well. And don't bang it too hard with the hot air because you will find that your colour will go where you don't want it to go. And as it's drying, you'll know that you're getting there because that sheen will start disappearing and your colour will start flattening and smoothing out. So you've got the bases there of something really pretty. Now, to come in, I'm going to come in with the yellow again now, straight in on my brush and work my way down and out and just push that yellow back in. So we've almost, what we've done here, we've almost drawn a little sketch with the initial color. 
and now all I'm doing is giving it a bit more vibrance by adding in a little bit more color so this is the second layer and this is about playing today it's not about perfection um, if you want to paint realistic that's totally up to you this is more of a, a soul painting where you're just coming in and because you don't really feel like painting you're throwing down some color so again with that same violety purple and I'm coming in now a little bit darker and I want it to flow into the yellow and I want to start creating another layer with some highlights let it merge and mingle and do its wonderful thing now I just want to work around each petal flicking that brush up and around that's how simple that is and again the consistency of the paint it's flowing not too watery there's a lot of color still to be applied and what you're doing is you're creating a little bit of depth and a little bit of texture there so just work your way around I, the pressure that I'm applying at the moment is super super light and I'm really letting that tip of the brush move and mingle around just flicking it out the colors of the Mungia set they're quite dull these like purpley colors they're not as vibrant as the Mikadors Again, all I'm doing is now flicking and wanting that all to merge. But as the yellow goes and penetrates into that violety color, it's changing the, the color and that's giving you some interest, point of interest within your flower. Now as that's drying, I'm going to come in with the Payne's Grey, which I seem to have on my palette everywhere. And I'm going to use that to draw in the stem of the flower so just the tip of the brush I'm going to use it on the side and I'm going to guide my hand around and let the the weight of the brush softly touch the paper and move it around and that should give you quite a nice line one would hope so in guiding it around and dropping it down so I'm doing this whilst the flower itself is drying off before I add in any more details now this top end I want to choose a green not really happy with the greens um, within the palette so I'll just have a play I want it a little bit more muted and not so bright because I'm just going to add in a little bit of red because the colour itself of the flower is a bit muted so a big big strong green isn't going to work okay and now I'm going to flip up the leaves of this bud so it's all freehand and you're just having a play you're not doing anything sensational a little bit of Payne's grey in there a little bit more of that green now so just playing and as I bring the the color down I'm just going into the areas that are already wet so the color should just follow those initial lines like so okay so in with some more purple now this is dried off this is a different shade a little bit more vibrant and I really want to use that to define each of these petals. Now for anybody who is asking questions, I will go back and write in any answers to those if I can answer the questions themselves. And again, just flicking out. And following through. And it sounds like someone's going to start a chainsaw in a minute so it might get a little bit loud we'll see what happens the neighbors in the um, area have been very active chopping wood as winter approaches 
Okay, just more depth with the purple. And you can probably hear that chainsaw going. Could even be a whippersnipper, I don't know. I seem to always pick the moments when someone's being active in the in the front yard. Okay, just coming in again with the purple. And just playing and letting that purple sort of run around but still leaving highlights. Remember to leave the whites and remember to leave the lights when you're painting. I wonder how loud that is for you guys on the mic. In with that purple and just in the corners and the edges. And I don't mind that it bleeds in. That bit's not bothering me at all. As that dries, I'm going to bring in some yellow now and work on that little um, flower that's about to pop out, the bud. Just a little bit of yellow. In with the green. It's my mix of green and the panes. And then out with the purple, like so. Nice and rich. And then I'm going to use that water to carry through the colour. Like so. And again, excuse the um, chainsaw. So I'm going to take a little bit of um, purple out. So just a bit of paper towel there and add in a little bit of yellow. Just a little bit of green now. I'm just using a little bit of olive green now. I'll let that drip in there. I might even mix in that olive green now with a little bit of panes and just drop it in. Like so. Okay, so what I want to do now, as you are being serenaded by the chainsaw next door, is take in a little bit of that paint and start dropping it into the centre. Just little dots, like so, for the centre bit of the flower. And then the orange straight out of the pan and I'm dropping it in with the panes now and that's just going to loosen things up and darken that area up a little bit. So as your layers dry you can come in and just play and jiggle around and bring in more texture. the way around and just keep building it up like so and because the paper's wet it'll just mingle and merge and if there's areas that you don't like just drop in a little bit of water and let it merge little bit more orange here. Really just flood that center like so. And then a little bit of that orange just down the bottom of that new bud. And enhance it with a little bit of purple. Easy peasy Japanesey. Um, nothing hard about this. It's just playing around um, getting to know your colours and really working on 
the size of your petals and making sure that they're nice and even and working on the proportions. Now, just to finish it off, I'm going to add in a leaf down the bottom. So with a leaf, normally I work out where I want to put it. I'll use my brush. I'll come in with a tip and use the water and jag out a leaf in there somewhere. And then I'll come in with my green, which I'm going to mute down with a little bit of this paint and just drop it in. And the color will follow the water. So a little bit more of the panes now. And the reason I'm putting the panes in is because I've already used it in, in the painting itself. And just jag it in. And intensifying some of the, the darker values up the stem. To make your stem thicker. I tell you, I can't believe I'm taping this whilst the neighbour is doing what he's doing. Now, just a little bit more of that olivey green. I'll let it disperse in there. I'm doing is just enhancing some of the elements, popping in a bit more panes, letting it flow through, and a little bit of panes down the bottom too. Oh Erica, I can't believe that there is a chainsaw going on here, but um <laughs> It is what it is. Now, as you can see, the colors here have intensified, so I quite like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of purple and I'm going to take a little bit of paints and mix that in with the purple. And then I'm going to actually add in a little bit of that into the flower as well. And see how it's automatically giving me a bit of depth, a bit more paints. But I'm still staying true to the colour because I really don't want to lose the original colour that I've popped in. Just letting that mingle and merge. It's just coming out nicely now. So when I started I had no intention of mixing any Payne's grain with the purple so this is this is where we play this is where you get to get a feel for what you're doing and I always like to just pop in a little bit of water and let it all merge and mingle and create blooms and points of interest which is the cool thing about watercolour just in down the bottom intensifying the colour and letting that paint sort of mingle up okay super simple hey there Jill super simple just work on your proportions choose any colour let it all mingle and merge this live will be posted in albums, I'm pretty sure, if you want to have a go. Um, but again, once this is finished and it's all dry, you can come in with a liner and you can line around your petals 